Okay, let's launch Animate. We're going to take a look at the code snippet for coding with CreateJS. So I'm going to select the default setting here under the advanced settings. I'm selecting HTML5 Canvas. It'll create a document 550 by 400, which is a, a standard size that you may have seen in previous versions of the application. We'll go ahead and hit Create. And I'm going to go ahead and center this. I'm going to do a Command 1. And right now I've got my output window over here on the bottom left hand corner. So I'll just show you how to do that real quick. So if you go, if I'm going to do a, a reset designer and I'll reset everything. So if I go to the window drop down menu and open up my output window, it's going to cover up my timeline. And I find that to be a little annoying because it's constantly hiding it. And I got to go unhide it to get back to it. So it's easier for me just to stick it under here underneath the properties and that way it doesn't keep on covering up. Every time I do a return in here it's going to try to send me a message and that message pops the window open and if this was still over here I'd cover my timeline. So it's, it's just a little bit more convenient to get that out of the way. Okay, just let's set up the generic uh, CreateJS format. Uh, I'm going to make this easy to see so this will be 100 by 100 and we're going to set the, the location. Uh, the zero point on an object, on a shape, is always the upper left hand corner. So if I make this zero by zero, it automatically realigns itself with the stage at the zero, zero position. So those are the coordinates. Now that's going to change, and the reason why I zeroed this out is to show you that change when we make this into a, into a CreateJS code uh, uh, movie clip. So we're going to go to the code snippets and we're going to open up the HTML5 canvas. We're going to go to the CreateJS. Let me open this window a little bit larger so we can see what's going on. And down here on the bottom is the create, uh, the uh, tweening using code from the CreateJS APIs. So while this is selected, we're going to double click. It's going to give me a warning. It's going to tell me that it needs to be converted into a movie clip. So your selection must be converted to a movie clip in order to apply the code snippet. Animate will convert and create an instance a name for you. Uh, so it's basically going to do everything for me. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. So if we move this out of the way and we click back on the original square that we created, still the same dimensions but this time its X and Y coordinates have changed because CreateJS automatically centers the movie clip when you uh, create it so that's what happened there okay so uh, we'll go to the code and we'll take a look at the code and kind of identify what's going on okay so the first thing I want you to notice is that there's a loop and it's set to true and if I run this the animation is going to loop now if you're on a retina display, you're going to notice that there's an anomaly. Uh, we'll cover that in a second. So let's do a command return. And so now it's going to loop. Now if you were on a retina display, this would have gone down further and it would have disappeared. And it has something to do with the fact that you're working with roughly double the resolution. And it's still animating the right way. And if you wait long enough, eventually it'll drop down the way this one is and it'll disappear again. And, uh, but for now, there's a loop set up. And uh, to turn the loop off, you would change this to false. Okay, now let's get rid of that problem that we're running into with the uh, resolution. The X that's being called out over here is the current target. The target is what's being animated. The target is being assigned the movie clip on the stage. So this is movie clip number one. And in the code over here, we're taking movie clip number one and we're assigning it to the variable called target. And so then the whole animation takes place because this target now is actually referencing movie clip number one. So now here in this X colon, we're referencing where the new location is supposed to be. And it's looking at the target's X position and it's taking the X position and it's using that as a reference. 
So if we come back over here and we look at the x position, we'll see that the target is set to 50. And that means that this over here is actually the value of 50. So we can manually set it up that way, and we won't notice a difference in the animation. Here's where the problem occurs with retina displays. Safari is trying to recognize that you're working with a display that's being converted to a retina display, and Canvas is trying to use the actual resolution. And so one problem tries to fix the other, and the Canvas height gets converted, and you're a lot better off just calling the explicit height or width if you know whatever the canvas is. So in this case, the height is set to 400. So if I change this to 400, I'm now essentially not taking advantage of the canvas width and height options, which also exist down here as well. Uh, this in here is going to, on, on my display, it's going to look like nothing's changed. But if you've got a retina display, that'll fix it. So you need to go to everywhere where it says canvas width or canvas height and type in the actual number. So now we're working with the width, which is 550. 550. And so rotation is fine. A weight is fine. X scale is fine. So here's more canvas references. And that's the width. So that's also 550. And here's the canvas height, which is 400. Regardless whether you're working on a retina display or a high definition display or not, you need to get rid of this canvas.height or canvas.width because if you generate it and it looks good on your non-retina display, when somebody opens it up on a retina display, it's going to look bad. So get rid of this canvas.height or canvas.width even if you're not on a retina display. So now, we won't notice a difference in this display, but if you've got a retina display, it'll look correct. So if we run this, you should be seeing this now. Now, in order to get a better feel of what's going on in the background, I'm going to go ahead and change the background color. You don't have to do this. It's just, I, it's just going to make it easier to understand what's going on. So I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to click on the, on the stage, and I'm going to change the background to a light gray so I can see it. And the other thing I'm going to do, let me close my code snippets, I'm going to give myself a pin over here to open up another preview. Every time I click on an object, my, my code disappears, and then I have to come back over here. But if I add a pin in here and I pin open the code, I get another view. And now I can select something else, and because I've got another view, I can get to it. And this is still over here is the default view. This tab or this view in here now it allows me to click anywhere on the stage, any object, see the changes occur over here, and I can reference that over here. Well, right now, now that we're, if we run this, you're going to see that this is 55, and uh, that's probably going to drop the shape a little bit off the edge by a little bit there. And you can see that this doesn't get quite to the edge, and it enlarges that way. So if you wanted to go right up to the edge in here, this number over here should be a 50. And the reason why that has to be a 50 is because 400, it's going to take it to the Y position all the way over, or rather all the way to the bottom. And it's going to offset it by 50, which just happens to be where this thing is centered. So that'll make it lay flat. Over here, that should also be 50. And let's see if I've got any other 50s, and I think that's it. Now, this one over here says 110. That should be 100, because that's the size of the square, 100 by 100. So if we run that, now we'll see that this drops flat to the bottom, slides over and, and flat to the side, and then it enlarges and appears to be enlarging from that corner. So now we've got a sense of how to control this thing. One other thing that you want to pay attention to are the commas and the semicolon. Throughout this code in here, this bottom half of the code in here, there's only one semicolon. So if you start editing the text, make sure that the last thing on the line is the semicolon. And if I do a command return, you can see that this thing does its thing. And then it's going to enlarge. 
and then as soon as it gets large, if the loop is set up, it bounces immediately to the other side. So let's set the loop up to true, and we'll run it, and you'll see that there's no delay. As soon as it enlarges, it bounces right back to the beginning, just like that. If we want a slight delay while it's looping, all we need to do is grab this weight. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to stick it right before the semicolon. I'm going to do a return and paste. And so it's kind of, let me clean that up a little bit. It's kind of the same format. So as soon as all of this is done, but remember, the semicolon comes to the end. So if I run this, I do a command return. Now there's going to be a little bit of a delay. So it enlarges, sits for a little bit, then it bounces back. So that's good. Okay, what if I wanted to go back to the original position? So then what I need is one of these clusters over here. One of these clusters in here starts with the word two, and it's always waiting on or ends at the weight. Uh, or if it doesn't have a weight, it ends with the, this uh, parentheses over here on this side. I need to copy that underneath. So I'll go ahead and grab one of these, and I'll take it with the weight. I'll copy that, and now I'm going to go ahead and hit a return, and I'll paste that. Remember, only one semicolon, and now I can go ahead and go back to the original dimensions. Well, the original dimensions over here were 50 by 50, because it's rounded out to 100. Uh, no rotation. I don't need a rotation, so I'm, I'm going to hit a return, two returns in here, because the other thing that I need to do is I need to get the scale back to the original size. So I'll steal these two here, and I'll paste them there. Let me fix that up, and I'll set this back to one. So it's going to go back to uh, one to one ratio. Two is double the size. And now we'll get rid of this extra space in here. And I don't need this comma in there, so I'll delete that. I do need these others. If I forget a comma, if I delete this and I try to run it, I'm going to get squat. It's got a problem with the quote. And that's because I forgot this comma over here. So let me do an undo on that. And so the comma comes back right over here. And now when I run it, it's going to work. I'm going to get it's going to loop it's going to get large and then once it gets large now it's going to wait a second get small and move to the upper left hand corner and stop there and now it starts all over again so that's the setup for controlling this and in the next movie we're going to take a look at how to create this into a function so that we can essentially generate the code uh, on multiple objects.